scenes, I have to say that you know, I, I put my hands a little bit in front of my eyes because I, I, I didn't want to be you know like petrified for the rest of my life. But, but um, the one thing that I that I think I got from it, it was like a feeling of revenge. Is is that true? To me, it felt like a like a revenge porn because porn in the end or a lot around sexuality between men and women is often so much about power and the older I get the more angry I get when I think of things that happened to me when I was younger I mean like we, we saw in the film from the from the 70s and so the the one thing that it, I won't say it gave me a good feeling but it was something that I could understand or, or that I could take with me was a feeling of revenge is that true um. Yes, uh, of course, yes, and um, as I as I was saying before, maybe I'm making it sound better, but it was a bit for me. I mean, my real revenge was towards uh, the mainstream cinema, so it was like my revenge. Okay, so you will make me do film. Okay, then my, I might as well do porn. So this was my revenge, which is film in the end. So, so yes, for me it is uh, revenge. But um, mm, yes, but revenge, as as you were saying, uh, sex is about power. And so revenge can be not only um, harsh and uh, uh, I mean it can be it can become playful in the end and and in the end it's romantic I don't know how the end works I was shocked by the film too when I was watching it I thought oh my god this is really really but I mean. Maybe that is what I like about film and is what I don't often see in films nowadays when I go and sit to the cinema is something that kind of, uh, ah, you know, moves, uh, shocks me a little bit. And that's a feeling that I really like in film. And so, yes, that's also another revenge. You know, maybe sometimes we like to have films that kind of um, move you a little bit more and not just uh, soothe you. Mm. So it is, yes, about revenge. <laughs> uh, anyone else would like to, to ask a question? Or yeah. share? Um, I was just uh, curious about the way that you made that character more of uh, an animal or more less um, less human. Yeah. Yes, because when we started, maybe that's a my escamotage, because when we started, it was all about, you know, women doing porn, and so uh, women, and, and it's not men doing porn, but it's women. So uh, an animal was an escamotage to get out of this um, double, you know, this either women or men, uh, which is now dated uh, nowadays. Uh, so, in the beginning it was supposed to be um, maybe a gorilla or a bear, but then I found out with a um, makeup artist, with a prosthetic makeup artist, that uh, hair is so expensive, you know, <laughs> to make fake hair is so expensive. Just to cover her up with hair would have been really like, I don't know, the whole budget of the film. And so we had to really work out something that wasn't hairy, which was, ah, because you know, if you want something that is challenging for a man, it's a hairy beast. And uh, so we had to work, and so that's how the idea of a satire came out. So yes, the, you know, the, the sexual mythological creature, which is usually a man in this, in this way with a woman. And uh, the great thing of her clitoris, clitoris? Yeah. Okay. Clitoris that was so, you know. Prominent. Big, yeah. yeah, prominent. Yes. So <laughs> that was the prosthetic, the prosthetic makeup. And that took a lot of time. In fact, the Valentina Nati, the porn actress, she was 
so pissed. And she was so fed up, you know. She was lying there for 10 hours with two men, like painting her up and doing all this. She was like, what the fuck? Let's go and do porn. What is this <laughs> I mean, she. I mean, she really loved it, but yes, she saw the bad side. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So she was very aggressive when she arrived on the set. <laughs> we really built her up. How much you met her? You didn't know her before, but you had her in mind for your film. No, uh, we met her because she's a very clever girl. I mean, and she's very. Um, creative and very intelligent and uh, uh, porn is too small for her, you know, mainstream porn. And so she looked for us. As soon as she heard from the news or whatever that this group of uh, women directors w wanted to do porn, she couldn't, she was just waiting for it. And so she called her up, she called us up and we met. And we had lunch, and I remember meeting her, and she was like my little sister. You know, she had sneakers, she had leggings, no makeup. And I was so shocked because I know I realized that I thought a porn star would come up with high heels and, you know, big makeup. And so I thought, my God, how, how bourgeois I am. You know, I thought that she could. And so she really struck a chord in me. I mean, I was really um, impressed by her and how clever and how, um, uh, you know, porn wasn't provocative for her. It was just what she wanted to do. It was, she had like a mission, you know, she's, uh, uh, she feels like she has a mission. For example, she, she, uh, she, she likes the idea of doing porn even when she is 80. You know, she doesn't want to start through porn and then become an actress or a DJ or a writer. No, she just wants to do porn. So it's something really, I mean, I admire her. Yeah, so I fell in love the second I met her. And so I didn't think she was the right one because she was a small, you know, small girl. She was like my little sister. And I was thinking of a big woman, you know, big actress. And then at some point I realized that the character of, of Queen Kong wasn't big and scary and threatening in a sense physically, but it was really porn is threatening. And she is threatening. Mm -hmm. Although she's a young girl. Very nice. So she's, yeah. And the she said became like the beginning of a friendship because again because I mentioned yeah. briefly because then uh, Monica made the film about Valentina Nepe and it about uh, yes. not least her which is called Your Son of Valentina Nepe which is a masterpiece in my opinion <laughs> and uh, so do you still keep in touch with her? Oh we do but then so I had to stop doing porn because everybody started threatening me if you do another porn you're not gonna work anymore. <laughs> I had to stop and she was disappointed with me because, you know, she wants to go on until she's 80. But some, at some <laughs> point, <laughs> I felt like it was at a, I had to pick, you know, I was, how do you say, a crossroads. <laughs> so I said, okay, I can go on without doing porn. I was wrong, so I will go back to doing porn. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I said, okay, I can do something else that is not porn. And so now I'm working on documentaries. So 